Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about necroptosis and pyroptosis. Already in the previous videos, we have discussed about the necrosis and apoptosis. Now in this video, first we'll let's discuss about the necroptosis and later we'll discuss about the pyroptosis. Okay, so let's begin with the necroptosis. See in the name itself is there, something similar to the necrosis and something, some events are similar to the apoptosis. Okay, necroptosis. So what exactly is necroptosis? If I have to put it in one single way, it's a program necrosis. Mainly it's a necrosis. Okay, it's a variant of the necrosis. It's a programmed necrosis. So necroptosis is programmed necrosis. So if someone asks you, mainly is it necrosis or apoptosis? It's a variant of necrosis. Now, why I am calling it as necrosis? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the cell death, cells are dying. There will be damage to the cell membrane. There will be leaking of contents of the cell membrane, which can lead to the inflammation. So, the morphological events resembles necrosis. So, that's why it is a variant of necrosis. Then, why it is apoptosis? When we are, why we are calling it as apoptosis? Because it is programmed. It's a programmed necrosis. Why we are not simply directly calling it as necrosis? Why we are not calling it as necrosis? Because necrosis is always pathological. But this necroptosis is both physiological as well as pathological. Okay, we'll see what those one by one differences in a minute. So let's begin. Necroptosis, it is both necrosis plus apoptosis. Necrosis and apoptosis. Okay. In necroptosis, is there is any involvement of caspases? The caspases are getting involved. Okay, it's like apoptosis is there, right? Any caspases are involved? No, no caspases are involved. So it is caspase independent. So caspase independent cell death. Caspase independent cell death. And this necroptosis, it's a programmed cell death, right? It's a programmed cell death. So, as there is a programming, certain events should happen. So, there is involvement of energy. It's an active process. But necrosis is a passive process. Necrosis is unprogrammed cell death. Necroptosis is programmed cell death. Necrosis is always pathological, but this necroptosis is both physiological. And pathological. Which means certain cells in the body, okay, certain cells physiologically will undergo necroptosis. Certain cells will pathologically undergo necroptosis. Okay. So, what are the physiological examples of necroptosis? So, in which cells, in which body cells, there will be physiological necro necroptosis? Seen in the growth plate, okay, during growth plate formation in the bones. Growth plate. During growth plate formation. So, during growth plate formation, certain cells in the bone will commit necroptosis. Okay, during growth plate formation in bones. Now, pathological examples of necroptosis, which cells will undergo such kind of death? In pancreatitis. Okay, in pancreatitis, in fatty liver, hepatocytes will undergo necroptosis. Okay, in cells which are infected with cytomegaloviral infections and in certain neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinsonism, Alzheimer's. Okay, so in these conditions, you can see the pathological necroptosis. Okay, so examples are completed. Now, after this, Let's see how exactly this pathway is occurring, how exactly the necroptosis is occurring. Okay, so the heading is pathway, pathway of necroptosis. See in this pathway, what exactly happens is, so now what we are discussing, we are discussing about the pathway of necroptosis. So what exactly is happening? Let's look here, there is this one cell. Okay, look here, there is a cell. 
Now, this cell is having a receptor on its surface. Okay, there is a receptor on its surface. What is this receptor? This is tumor necrosis factor. Okay, TNF receptor. So, tumor necrosis factor receptor. Now, when the tumor necrosis factor, when it comes and binds to the cell, okay, the tumor necrosis factor is coming and binding to the cell. Now, this receptor which is activated, it is going to activate certain kinases inside the cell which are called as the RIP1 and RIP3 kinases. So, RIP1 and RIP3, RIP kinases. So, these kinases are going to be activated because of the tumor necrosis factor receptor activation. So, this RIP kinases, what they will do? Inside the cell, this RIP kinases will, kinases, what they will do? They will do phosphorylation of one more substance called as MLKL, okay? So, there is one more substance present inside the cell which is called as the MLKL. This MLKL is getting phosphorylated because of the RIP kinases. Now, what this MLKL will do? This MLKL will directly go and cause the damage to the cell membrane, causes cell membrane damage. So, cell membrane damage, after that what you will have? Inflammation. So, when the cell membrane is getting damaged, what happens? Cellular swelling. So, all these are the events which are similar to the necrosis. These events, they are all resembling necrosis, right? So, that is why it is a variant of necrosis. So, what exactly happening? See, there is a program. It is a program type of necrosis. So, whenever the tumor necrosis factor is coming, it is going to bind with the tumor necrosis factor receptor. RIP kinases are activated, MLKL is phosphorylated, this MLKL will start to do the cellular damage or cell membrane damage which is going to cause the influx of water into the cell. Cellular swelling will happen, cell damage, cell rupture which is just similar to the necrosis. Okay, So, that is why we consider it under a variant of necrosis. Note. At the end, what you will see? Inflammation is present. Okay, inflammation is seen in necroptosis. Okay. Next, after this, let us discuss about pyroptosis. Okay. Pyroptosis. See, what exactly is pyroptosis? In the name itself, it is very clear. Okay, pyro. Pyro means what? Pyrogen. Okay. So, pyrogens are involved. Which pyrogen? Interleukin 1. Interleukin 1. So, what is this interleukin 1 pyrogen is going to do? Fever. Okay, fever. Usually, fever is not seen with any necrosis. Sorry, apoptosis. Okay, fever is something seen with the necrosis. Inflammation, fever. All these events are seen in the necrosis. Okay, so in pyroptosis also, there is some inflammatory mediator present. What is that inflammatory mediator? What is that pyrogen? It is the interleukin 1. It is the inflammatory mediator which is going to cause the fever. Okay, and there is also apoptosis, pyroapoptosis, pyroptosis. Okay, so there are certain events which will resemble the necrosis and there are certain events which will resemble apoptosis. So, now, let us see what exactly is happening in the pyroptosis. So, at the end of the day in pyroptosis, cell death is imminent. There is no doubt cell death will occur. After the cell death, there is fever. Okay, there is fever because of those pyrogens. Okay, during the cell death, certain pyrogens are released and those pyrogens are going to cause the fever. Okay, so let us see a cell. Now, let us take a cell. So, this is the cell which is undergoing pyroptosis. Now, what exactly is happening? So, now let us take this antigen. Let us start with an antigen. See, there is this one antigen, the bacterial antigen, uh, maybe a flagellin. Okay, this is the antigen. See, this antigen is going to come and bind with the receptor on the cell surface. There is a, there is, this is different type of receptor, which is going to recognize the antigens. Now, this antigen is coming and binding over here. So, this receptor, which I have shown you here, this is called as a TLR, tall-like receptor. Okay, tall-like receptor. Whenever there is this antigen antibody binding, the stall like receptors inside the cell, they will activate certain caspases. Okay, certain caspases are going to be activated. So, procaspase, which is inactive form, procaspase number 11, 4, and 5. 11, 4, 5, these are the procaspases. Okay, so these procaspases are going to be converted into active caspases. So, which active caspases? 11, 
फोर फाइव द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कैश प्राइज इज कैश प्राइज नंबर इलेवन दट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कैश प्राइज नंबर इलेवन इज एक्टिवेट नाउ वन दिस कैश प्राइज आर एक्टिवेटेड डू यू नो वॉट दिस कैश प्राइज विल डू द कैश प्राइज आर गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट समथिंग कॉल्ड एज गैस डेरमिन okay there is a molecule called as a gas dermin gsdmd okay gas dermin so antigen binding with the toll like receptor activates the intracellular caspases caspase number 11 is activated mainly the caspase number 11 is going to activate the gas dermin do you know what this gas dermin will do gas dermin is the one which will go and cause the cell damage okay cellular damage okay so this gas dermin is going to cause the cell membrane damage okay cellular membrane damage leading to cellular swelling followed by cell rupture and inflammation so all these events damage to the cell membrane cellular swelling and inflammation all these events are looking like necrosis because in apoptosis there is no cell membrane damage cellular swelling will not occur cellular shrinkage there is cellular shrinkage will occur in the apoptosis okay so these events are resembling like necrosis so that's why it's a variant of necrosis okay now what else you have to know is certain antigens will directly enters into the cell okay there is this one antigen which is directly entering into the cell now inside the cell it is going to bind with different type of receptor which is called as a nod like receptors okay so intracellular antigens now the antigen is entering into the cell within the cell some bacteria entered into the cell so bacterial antigen is going to be recognized by the nod like receptor now this nod like receptors when they binds with the antigen they are going to activate something called as inflammasome so inflammasome is going to be activated okay now this inflammasome i want you to know this inflammasome can directly activate the caspase 11 okay inflammasome once it is there it can directly activate the caspase 11 so caspase 11 is going to activate the gas germin gas germin is going to cause the cell membrane damage necrosis okay so antigen receptor complex antigen receptor complex antigen with the nod like receptors they are going to activate the inflammasome now this inflammasome can activate the pro caspase number 11 to active caspase number 11 not only that this inflammasome can also activate one more caspase which caspase to pro caspase number 1 will be converted into caspase number 1 so caspase 1 is activated now what this caspase 1 will do caspase 1 is going to lead to the production of interleukin 1 as well as interleukin 18 so interleukin 1 and interleukin 18 are going to be released now what this interleukin 1 will do the interleukin 1 see it is going to directly activate the gas germin the interleukin 1 can directly activate the gas germin and can lead to cell membrane damage so this interleukin 1 as i have said is going to directly activate the gas germin and the gas germin you know it's going to cause the cell membrane damage and you know the things okay so the point which i want you to know is which caspases are involved okay in the pyroptosis the question which was asked which caspases are involved the most important caspase is caspase number 1 as well as caspase number 11 so who is going to activate the inflammasome Inflam inflammasome activation is going to be done with the help of not like receptor when antigen is going to when intracellular antigen is going to be uh, recognized by the not like receptor is going to activate the inflammasome inflammasome activates the caspase number 1 caspase number 1 helps in the production of interleukin okay the interleukin 1 is the one which activates the gas germin and causes the cell membrane damage and not only that see during the cell death ultimately interleukin 1 is produced interleukin 1 is the one which is going to responsible for fever so there is pyrogen that is produced that is interleukin 1 which is going to cause the fever okay so with this we have discussed about the pyroptosis the pathway of the pyroptosis and the pathway of necroptosis so remember both this pyroptosis and necroptosis they are variants of necrosis okay both are the variants of the necrosis there are certain necrotic events you, you can see there are morphological events which will resemble the necrosis and there are certain events which will re, uh, which will resemble the apoptosis that is a program there is a programming in the cell death so that's why apoptosis okay important points just necroptosis it is both physiological as well as pathological physiological example is seen during the growth plate formation pathological examples are seen during parkinsonism uh, fatty liver fatty liver pancreatitis you can see okay cme infections alzheimer's disease neurodegenerative conditions you can see 
in necroptosis which are who are involved tuber necrosis factor is involved tuber necrosis factor binding with the tumor necrosis uh, receptor okay so activates the rip kinases and mlkl which is going to lead to the necrosis or the cell membrane damage in pyroptosis pyro remember the word pyro pyrogen interleukin 1 is involved procaspase number 1 is involved caspase number 1 is involved caspase 11 is involved okay these are the important caspases which i want you to know which receptors are involved tall like receptors nod like receptors tall like receptors present on the cell surface nod like receptors present within the cell intracellular so with this we have completed necroptosis as well as pyroptosis hope the video is helpful thank you